again, this is Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden. Today we're going to paint this beautiful painting called Melt Off. And I'll show you the paints that we're going to use today. We're using primary colors, blue, yellow, and red, and black and white. And with those colors, you can create any color you can imagine, uh, with the exception of neon um, or fluorescent. Uh, but basically, we have about 500 different paintings here at our studio. And we just use this simple arrangement of paints and we mix them to create the colors that we need. So, um, so that's cool. And then we also will be using a variety of basic brushes. I'm gonna use a large flat, a medium flat and a small round, but you can use whatever you have laying around and we'll figure out how to make that work. All right, also have some napkins and I have a nasty old water jar and uh, you can use a little container with your water or that. I do really encourage everyone to wear aprons. Um, and then I encourage you to sip on a beverage just because it might help you relax, whether it's water or uh, coffee or, um, you know, glass of wine or beer, whatever helps you relax. Cool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put water on my canvas. You can either use a spray bottle if you have one laying around, not many people do, or you can just use your big brush and then cover your canvas with water. The reason I'm doing that is we're in Denver, which is a very dry, dry place. And in the winter, especially, it's, uh, it's really dry here. And so I like to cover my canvas with water just so that my paint will move more smoothly across the canvas. It, so it doesn't dry out quite as quickly. So go ahead, I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, so we are using acrylic paints today. Acrylic paints, uh, if you haven't used acrylic paints before, they are permanent, they will stain your clothes as we talked about already. Um, and so if you do get any on your clothing, you can, try to blot it out with a clean napkin, just pull it right off. Uh, same with your carpet. Um, and then rub some dish soap into it until you can wash it with the hottest water possible for that garment or carpet. If it's on your kitty, you have to give your kitty a little bath. Um, yeah, and if it's on your computer, a little rubbing alcohol on a cotton ball sometimes works. All right, cool. So we're gonna work on this beautiful sky. And the sky is basically blue with some other uh, pastel colors in it. And then we're gonna bring that all the way down. So it's also the reflection in the lake. So this step's gonna take us a while. I'm gonna walk you through it and I'll give you some time to visit while you're painting, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my big brush. I'm gonna dip it in blue paint and I am going to streak from the outsides in more, only because right now I wanna put on the heaviest amount of paint. Notice I'm doing this pretty fast and half haphazardly. I want the sides to be darker than the center. And if you look at the composition of the painting, look at the painting, you'll see why. The center is where all the light is. That's where the sunset is up here, top center, and the reflections of the sun sunset are bottom center. So if I make the sides darker by just starting on that wet canvas with some blue paint, if I move quickly enough, what I can do, like that's starting to set a little bit and that's a good thing, but I don't want it to set completely like that. I'm just, Pulling it across quickly, not, I'm not overthinking it. Just, just enjoying the motion. So if I do it like that and I cover all the sides with blue first by pulling in from the outside to the center, leaving this more open, then all I have to do is real lightly without picking up any more paint, is just sweep over the center back and forth, just pulling it horizontally like that. That leaves my center lighter. I actually learned that when I was um, 
getting certified for teaching Bob Ross. This is not a Bob Ross class. Bob Ross um, classes are oil painting classes, but some of the techniques are useful to carry over into acrylics. And uh, Bob used to do that. He used to make the tops and the sides and the bottom darker and then leave light in the center because if your canvas is white, why not, right? Cool. See how that left just light in the center? And you could sweep across some. You could do that. And it's okay if you have light streaks throughout your painting because we're gonna be putting light streaks in anyway. The key is just keep it straight across. And I know I promised you time to visit. I'll give you one more instruction then I'll let you just do that much. Notice how I'm not adding any paint on my brush to the center. I want this to deliberately be a little lighter. But I'm also gonna paint the tops like this. And the reason I'm doing that and the sides and the bottom. So the sides like that, and I'll tell you why. That's called a gallery wrap. And when you paint your painting and put a gallery wrap on it, meaning you paint the sides and the top and the bottom too, then you have the option of not using a frame. Uh, that looks more modern for one, if you're into modern. If you're not, um, you still have the option of buying a frame and putting it in a frame. It's just that frames cost money. And in the meantime, it looks great without a frame just hanging right on your wall. We had a teacher here who used, to, who used to joke that then you can take down your college degree and your wedding picture and your kids' pictures and replace it with your painting. They'd love that, right? All right, so bottom's tricky. If you're smart, you start with your bottom, but I wasn't. That's okay. Get a little paint on me, that's all right. Top, bottom, doesn't matter, it's the same now. And if you get any drips, just pull them across, let it dry, and then you can go over it later. See that drip? It's okay. Everything's okay when you paint. That's what's so great about painting, is you can fix it. It's not like the real world where you get to decide alone who your leaders are and how much money's in your budget. When you paint, it's your world, you decide. You decide everything. That's, that's, that's what I love about painting. The whole world goes away. It's just me and my paint. Every day is a good day when you paint. Cool. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put streaks across the middle of white, and then we're gonna make some pastel streaks and put them across. And then we'll come in and, and give the painting a landscape. We'll give it grass, we'll give it trees, okay? But right now we're just gonna paint light. And so the way I'm gonna paint light is I picked up my big brush, I put paint on it, but then I chiseled it on the side of the plate like that so that I don't have any lumps. I'm just using thin, thin paint. If your paint is really hard like peanut butter, and sticky, add a little water to it and stir it around first. We want it to be soft like yogurt, okay? Um, and if you would mute during this time, I'll go ahead and show you that and then I'll ask you to unmute, okay? Cool, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take that flat brush and I'm gonna hold it on the skinny side, see that? Like that, the skinny side. Not the fat side like that. And hold it horizontal so I get so I can make some thin strokes and I'm going to pull across as straight as I can. I'm gonna pull across some light. Now here's the thing, watch this part. Let me pick up a little bit more. In the center, right around the center, I want those to be a little brighter and a little longer because that's gonna be my sunset area. And then they get a little smaller as I go down. Not perfectly, I'm not making a diamond shape, but just that's the general idea that the sunset area is a little brighter and a little longer, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do that. 
with some white. And if your white is mixing with your blue and making light blue, that's even better. That's really cool. Do you see how that looks like some light in the sky and then some light on the water already just with white? Well, in your imagination, I mean. I'm already thinking about going to Mexico when I paint this. Although there's not really this much grass and trees in Mexico. So uh, let's say it's uh, Reno. Or somewhere. Maybe up in the mountains, maybe on Lake Dillon. Oh, that sounds nice. Or Grand Lake. All right. After you do that, and no hurry, I know you're, you have a lot more of that to do. No rush, okay? Then you can take a little bit of yellow. I didn't even clean my brush from the white. Oops, didn't even clean it. Sorry, not the camera. So I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow, and then I'm gonna streak that in too, and let that just mix more bright at the horizon a little longer little little brighter at the horizon meaning this area and then fade it off into the sky and then down here same thing fade it off into the bottom all right while you're doing that go ahead and unmute and visit And I'll give you a few minutes to catch up on that, okay? Do fundraisers here all the time in case you ever wanna do a fundraiser with us. Basically what we do is we just, we charge $40 to the, whoever wants to paint that day. Um, and if you open it up to the public, you can get more. Uh, and then um, we charge 20, so we split it basically. And we've raised, I don't know, I don't remember numbers very well. I'm, I'm an artist, not an accountant, but, um, I remember like in 2017, it was like $50,000 that we raised for nonprofits. Wow. Yeah. Well, between that and giving away gift certificates to the area schools, um, that combined. So to recap what we have so far is we have that streaky blue, then we have some white streaks, and then we have some yellow streaks. And then um, we'll go back in and we'll put pink after we do our yellow. So when you get a chance, go ahead, clean your brush really well. I'm using a medium flat now, and um, I'm going to add a little pink to my sky. The way you make pink is you just mix a little white with a little red, super easy. So I'm gonna make some pink, and then I'm gonna streak that in the same way. Uh, holding my brush horizontally. And then um, in general, a sunset, here are the orders that are in a typical of, of colors in a typical sunset. Usually you have white where the sun is, and then it goes yellow, and then it goes orange, and then it goes red. So um, I'm gonna think about where my sunset is. I don't want it, uh, now the land may not be, let me rephrase that. I don't want my horizon to be perfectly halfway through my painting. I want it to either be a little higher or a little lower because it'll just look more natural. This one's a little higher. You can see the horizon's a little higher. So I'm gonna think about like I want, I'm gonna build up the white in here a little bit. And then I want a little more yellow and a little more pink higher than the yellow. They're all, the pink is gonna go all over, don't get me wrong but I just want more of it a little higher than the yellow. I hope that makes sense. So the pink in general is just, there's gonna be more of it higher. That's a higher sunset color. Hope that makes sense. You can still put it anywhere and you can totally ignore me if you want and put it wherever you want. That works too. 
but I just want it a little higher in the sunset and a little lower down here, more than the yellow was. Hope that makes sense. But whatever you do, it's gonna be beautiful. So don't worry about it too much. Emphasize lower in the water and higher in the sky with your paint. That's the bottom line. If you want it to look more sunsetty. Otherwise, just have fun and relax, it'll be great. All right, I gotta relax and not overdo it. I could paint, paint pastel colors as reflections all day long. If you overdo it, just clean your brush. Go back in with some blue. You can always undo it. Your world, you make it the way you want. So I can just pick it up, a little blue. I can just come back in and paint over anything that I overdid. No worries. Just pulling straight across. The reason I'm pulling straight across, I'll tell you, two reasons. One, in the water, when water, when um, you're looking at water from a distance, it's flat. In an ocean, in a lake, in big bodies of water, if you're if you're in a boat and let's say you're out whale watching or something and you look over the side of the boat, it looks really choppy, really choppy. But from a distance, water looks flat because it seeks its own level and then it looks flat. So that's why we're painting it flat because I'm gonna guess this is a, you know, fairly decent sized pond and we're not in a boat. My sky is a little bit brighter than the water and I'll tell you why. I did that because in general, reflections of things are less brilliant than the thing itself. So if you're walking and at night and you have a shadow, your shadow isn't going to be as um, solid and specific as the image of yourself, right? And so this is going to be a little tamer in the water because it's reflection of water, of light. Hope that makes sense. And while you're catching up on that, go ahead and unmute and, and visit. I'll give you a few minutes for that, okay? The reason the paint is, I was painting it on horizontally in the sky, obviously has nothing to do with water. The reason that is, is that <clears throat> at night, um, after the wind has been moving across the horizon all day, clouds tend to get thinner and straighter. Um, then, you know, in, in the daytime, if it's a real sunny, sunny early part of the day, you tend to see these, you know, not quite cotton ball clouds, but big fluffy clouds. And then as the day progresses, the wind moves and kind of pulls them across the, the uh, horizon, especially across bodies of water. And the clouds get longer and thinner. And at nighttime, you tend to see these really beautiful sunsets with just strings of color or, or bands of color that just kind of moving across the sky. So that's why you don't have to have it so straight in the sky. But in the water, we keep it really straight. In general, those are just generalities. Deviate as you want. That's just how it looks in my world. In Denver, we have the most beautiful pink clouds. 
I love the pink clouds in Denver. All right, I'm gonna have to stop or else I'm gonna have a totally pastel painting. So let's go ahead and we're going to outline our land. And so we just kind of have to uh, not get distracted by a pretty sunset and think about our land. I'm going to use a small detail brush, a round brush. And by round, I mean right up here underneath the bristles. It's just round when I spin it. And I'm going to put that on the water. And then I'm going to put it in my black paint. Um, actually, let's see, should I paint with black? Let's paint with, yeah, I can uh, paint with black if I keep it thin enough. Can I see uh, that brush again, please? Sure, just a small round brush. Okay. I wanna be able to see my lines, so let's do this. Let's mix a little yellow and a little blue together to make green, okay? And we are gonna be using a lot of green. Um, but for starters, just for the outline, I only need a little bit. I like to not over mix, you know, make too much of any one color. I like to mix as I go. So I'm just gonna mix a little time and I'm gonna use that to draw on my outline. All right, so what I wanna think about is, you can see up here the horizon line in this painting is up pretty high, okay? And so I'm going to, start, <clears throat> here's your, your courage test, right? You don't wanna have it through the middle, you wanna put it a little higher, okay? And I'm just gonna bite the bullet and I'm just gonna zigzag scribble in a horizontal line across and make my horizon line without overthinking it too much. And I'm doing that with my small brush and green. And then you'll see there's like this, what looks to be, there's another pond back here and then some land. So this is like a very shallow pond, obviously, because it has land cutting through it. So I'm gonna, so right up here, do you see how it looks kind of like a flat triangle for the back of that pond? So I'm gonna, <clears throat> the middle, a uh, third of my painting, maybe a little bit wider than third. I'm gonna just kind of scribble in what looks like a flat triangle. In other words, or maybe it's a crescent going down, something like that. Here's the, the back pond. And yours isn't gonna look like mine at the end and mine's not gonna look like yours or anybody else's and that's fine. No one's ever gonna see the original. They're just gonna see yours. They're gonna think you're a genius. On this side of the painting, it, there's a line that goes across and then there's a, a whole lot of lake or pond and then just a little bit at the bottom. So we're gonna, from the bottom of this crescent or flat triangle, whatever you wanna call that, I'm gonna angle down probably, probably a few inches, angle down, doesn't need to be straight. In fact, if it's not straight, it's better. I'll, another line. So here's my little, whatever that is. 
and then and 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 then all this uh well yeah anyway so this this line comes down here I'm not going to jump ahead all right so that's on that side okay we'll skip over to this side and let's start by doing the same thing over here And again, if yours doesn't look like mine, no one's going to know. That'll be fine. And on this side, oh, right coming from this line, there's a little island juts out, goes back in, and then it juts out all the way to the bottom. So from this line, I'm going to go a few inches in. I'm going to pull across a little piece of land, it's going to jut out, and then it's going to jut back in, and keep it curvy, and then I'm going to wiggle on some land going all the way across the bottom. Don't panic if you're lost, don't panic. Here's the key. Anywhere, if you have the sky open, and you and you just zigzag on sides that'll also work so don't don't worry okay <clears throat> down here all of this is going to end up being filled in as green i know after you made all that hard work making it pretty but we're just going to fill in all that with green so you can use a bigger brush but i just want to show you what that area down there means that's all land that's all in. And on this side, this this part, but not over here, this part, that's gonna be all land. And by land, I mean green. Don't do the other side yet though. I just wanted to give you an idea from those lines, what those lines are going to mean. Then over here, that piece that juts out, same thing. It's all land. And yeah, I took away some of my pretty highlights. Oh well, that's painting for you. No worries. So that's just the left side. The right side's a little different. So I'll let you catch up on the right side on the, sorry, on the left side, okay? And then the land goes all the way across the bottom, jagged and bumpy because nothing's ever straight in nature. Trees aren't straight, grass isn't straight, land isn't straight, mountains aren't straight. So this side, it's just a series of zigzags, but it does go all the way across the bottom and then filled in with green. And I'll hold it closer so you can see it better. In fact, I think I'm gonna, just for a few minutes, I'll Put this closer so you can really see it. Remember on this side of the lake or pond, it's just open water. If you want to change it up, feel free. Your call. And then on this right side, 
It's just, we're just gonna fill it in, make those lines a little wider. And what I'm doing is I'm, I put green on my brush, watch my hand. I'm flicking up, just flicking up to make grasses or foliage. I don't really know what that is. It's just making that line wider, but adding some grasses or foliage, not quite sure what that is, by just taking a medium flat and flicking up. Not covering the water, but just, just creating some, like I said, grass or foliage, or maybe there's some cattails in there, we don't know. Oops, my water was a little runny, my green was a little runny. And then I can just scribble on a little land underneath it. But at the top, it's that, it's flicking up. Basically, it's just kind of, I don't know what those are technically called, but it's just like land that's in a shallow pond and it, so if you're out in the mountains and you're kind of scrambling around and you're looking, you're like, oh, there's this, this beautiful ponds here. You're stepping on these wet ground areas, trying to avoid getting your feet wet. That's what those are. And in the other painting, there's even a little bit more that goes in here. So these are like a series of little ponds. And I can do the same thing back up here. I can flick up in the back. If your paints have a fan brush, you could do that with a fan brush and fan brushes look really cool too. But, and you can use either surface of your flat brush, the skinny side or the fat side, it doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of poking up. If you have worn mascara before, it's kind of like putting on mascara. You start at the base and Let's pull up. And I can go all the way across. And meanwhile, I've just been using that same green. We're gonna add some other colors in a few minutes, but for now, it's just, just kind of all same green. You could make little other areas if you want. If you like that look of having water separated by little bits of land, why not? It's your painting. In a second, I'll pull the camera back so that you can see it as a whole, so you know what I mean? Oh, and down here also, any place that's on the top of these, just flick up some grasses, okay? I wouldn't flick down into the water on the lower parts, but only on these upper parts. That makes sense, right? Because you're looking at it from where you're painting and the grass grasses grow up, they don't grow down. So anything on the bottom, just use your flat brush, some paint, and scribble on, popping up like applying mascara, but only faster and messier. Some grasses to the tops, tops of these islands or whatever they're called, little land masses. Okay. Here's where everyone's is gonna look different and that's what we want. No right or wrong. I keep the, I, in this particular composition, I'm keeping this side of the lake open. All right, 
So what I'm going to do, and I know you're still working on this, but I'll go ahead and give you the other steps. So those who are ready can hear it and move on. But if you're not ready, don't worry. Don't worry. Just kind of listen. I'm going to add more yellow into that green that I just made because I want a lighter version of it. In this painting, we want the grass to have a bunch of different shades of green. So by adding more yellow, I get a brighter, more yellow painting or uh, shade of grass. And if it, I keep it marbly, that's even better. And let me show you what I'm gonna do. In these areas, remember um, where we didn't pop up from the bottoms or pop down? We can just kind of fill this in with a, use a small brush and just kind of pop on some more grasses in a different green. We're adding a little texture and we're kind of doing it randomly in clumps or patches. We don't want anything that looks too perfect. Like we don't want to cover all of our dark with this light color. We just want to start adding variety in our foliage because maybe that's a different species of grass and it's a little brighter. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's a different kind of plant altogether, but don't cover all your dark. Just create clumps and patches with lighter grass. And I'm not covering up my dark grass. I'm letting that coexist. They all play nice in the sandbox together. They're all friends. Diversity is beautiful, right? So don't cover it all up. Just create more in another, another shade, okay? So that you have layers of different shades of grass. And then while you're doing that, feel free to unmute and visit and chat. And you can see in the original, then they even added a little white and made some even lighter in these light patches. The whole idea is you wanna add variety. There's very dark here. That green is almost black. It's so dark right here. See that? And then this is really light. And there's pretty much every shade in between. So that's what we're doing is we're not covering all of the grass with the same amounts of all the colors. We're just doing it sporadically, making little patches or clumps of different shades. So we've got all kinds of fun stuff going on in there. And we don't have to know if that a different species, a different plant, we don't have to know, who cares? This back line, I wanna keep it dark though, because it's far away. We want the brighter, brighter colors to be more forward up here. Okay, and then back here, keep it darker, okay? So go ahead and unmute if you like. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white to some of that too. And I can, I can add some of those too. Why not? I have to keep checking to see if I if you guys can hear me. These are so quiet. A very thoughtful, pensive group. You guys can hear me, right? Somebody? 
Yes, we can hear you. Awesome, thank you. I like to step away from my painting um, periodically to see what it looks like um, because you can't really see your own painting from up close. It's just impossible. It's just really, really hard. Um, <clears throat> and it's kind of like my philosophy about paintings. It's kind of like having company. If you're in their face you're, all the time, uh, you're not going to like it, right? You have to step back, give them their space. Uh, painting is the same way when you're painting. And then when you come back, you'll love it even more, or you'll know uh, what you need to work on, you know, as a painter. Um, but it's like raising kids too. If you if anybody has kids, don't be in their face all the time. Give them a little bit of space. And uh, so for my painting, I want to give it a little bit of space. I'll step back. I'll see what it really looks like from a distance, how other people would view it. And then I'll have a better idea of what I want to work on and what I already appreciate and love. I'm going to make myself do that. Uh, one other kind of quick thing. If you ever go to a museum uh, <clears throat> and see an original Monet or Van Gogh, you'll notice that the original Monets and Van Goghs look really terrible up close, honestly. Up close, awful. Because, and I'll tell you why, they're not supposed to look realistic from up close. That's the whole idea. They're supposed to just give you an impression of what you're looking at. And what I mean by an impression is an experience. It's supposed to um, conjure up the feelings you'd feel looking at that thing, but it's never supposed to look like the exact the same thing. So when Monet was painting um, in the impressionistic style, people didn't really understand that because there had been all these centuries of very realistic painters. And so when they first saw his work, they said, your paintings aren't finished. You only have underpaintings. And he said, oh, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm not painting that pond exactly. I'm not painting those flowers exactly. I'm not painting those, that bridge exactly the way it looks. I'm painting my experience of it, how I feel when I look at it, and what I remember after I look away. So... Give yourself the same respect you would give any one of the great artists and walk away from your painting. See it across the room. That's the only place it needs to look good is from across the room, okay? So if you haven't done that, I strongly encourage you. Notice that I added a little blue to some of my green and I'm putting in some little blue patches too. Mixing it up. You could even... Back here, you could even do it with some, you know, tiny bit of black in your green. Next to the water. Next to the water, there tend to be shadows underneath this stuff. So tapping in a little bit of black underneath plants next to the water helps to find the Line adds a little shadow underneath things. And you can put them in as little grass pieces if you want. But basically what we've got going on is all different shades of green from dark, 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 tinted with a little bit of black on the undersides to bright white and yellow tinted green on the tops of some of the grasses. As long as we have variety, from a distance, it's gonna look good. All right, I'm gonna go check mine from a distance. And if you wanna create dark corners to bring your eye into the center, you could always flick up some grass way off to the side or way down in the corner with just straight on black or black mixed with green. And that just, when you have dark areas, those are the area, uh, your eye will automatically shift away from the really dark areas. 
and it will go to the lighter areas. So it's kind of a way of directing your eye, like, hey, look over in here, because I want to show you my flowers. Just for fun, I'm going to show you a fan brush. Um, I know that in our kits, we don't have them, but it's kind of fun to show you how they work. This is a fan brush. Basically, it's just crimped. It's like a flat brush, but it's crimped here. And so, um, again, it, I'm just showing you, even if you don't have one, it's just kind of fun to learn about them, because why not, right? Uh, and so you dip the tips into whatever color, and then it, they're really great at making grasses. Uh, they're also really great about um, uh, for making fur on animals or hair. Uh, they're super cool for making pine trees. So if if painting is you know something that you enjoy and you want to um, you know keep keep painting, and I hope you do, consider asking Santa Claus or Hanukkah Harry or whoever uh, or your spouse for a fan brush your birthday, your holidays, and because uh, fan brushes are super fun. Is that a Bob Ross thing? Um, Bob Ross uses a lot of fan brushes, definitely. Definitely. But a lot of artists use fan brushes. They're just super cool. They make quick grass. See how quick you can flick up with a fan brush and it makes these really thin grasses. It's kind of a, it almost feels like a cheat. So I always say if you have a basic kit of brushes and in our kits, those brushes, you know, if you wash them and take care of them, they'll last you a long time. Uh, and I think all you need in addition to that really is a fan brush and you can paint pretty much anything under the stars. I haven't yet seen an inexpensive kit that includes fan brushes really, or else we would have put them in there. But I have way too much fun with fan brushes. You can do the same thing with flat. It just takes a while. That's all. <clears throat> Basically what we're going for is just a lot of texture and grass. However you get it on there. <laughs> I'm sitting on a chair and it's squeaking. I promise that's the chair. See? It's laughing. I'm just putting little tiny, tiny, skinny, little black shadows underneath, underneath the land that sticks out. Just teeny tiny, skinny, skinny, just to define that water line on the underside. So if you're a meticulous person, you're probably enjoying putting lots of detail. If you're someone who is not meticulous, you're probably like, when is she gonna move on? And I feel ya. We'll put our flowers on last and I'll give you a few more minutes to put on some um, grass, and then we'll do some trees. We'll do happy trees. We can't say happy little trees because that's copyrighted by Bob Ross and it's not technically a Bob Ross painting. This is acrylic, not, not oil. And the Bob Ross company really likes their trademarks, but our trees will be happy, I promise.
if you haven't looked at yours from five feet or more away, please do so, okay? All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some faraway trees. And even if you're not done with your grass, it's okay, just let what you have dry. And you can always come back to it after we put on our trees um, and you can see, uh, see it with fresh eyes. Oh, one thing before we move on to trees, I'm gonna just put a little bit of this lighter color, just a tiny bit. And I'm just pulling down a little bit straight down into the water back there and I'll tell you why I'm doing it. It's with that slightly lighter green because that's a reflection of those faraway trees in the water. So I'm just pulling down, pulling down, pulling down. Hold on one second. Here, All right, so I'm just pulling down with a tiny bit of green, holding my brush the flat way, the horizontal way, nowhere near as far as they are tall. Just pulling down a tiny, tiny bit of line. It's almost like putting, if you're a mascara wear, it's like putting your lower, lower lashes on. Not as tall as what's up above. These are just those very faint reflections in the water of what's up above. This is only on the underside. Straight down, super, super straight, super light, just a little bit. Reflections in the water. Kind of just makes the water line look a little furrier. I can hear the birds singing already. They're gonna love our flowers in a minute. So for those who don't like detail, I'm gonna keep going. So do me a favor, even if you like detail and you wanna keep working on it, let's look up here for a minute. We're gonna put in this middle area, okay, over the water, I'm gonna just streak on some little like one inch high-ish little trees across the back, just, just like trunks, like skinny little trees back there with my flat, large flat brush. And then they're just gonna kind of taper off and disappear on the sides. What that's doing is that's just painting little teeny far away pine trees. Notice that they're all different shapes, or pardon me, all different heights. I don't need much detail back there because you can't really see them from far away anyway. That's why I just made them lines. 
and then down below, just kind of filled it in, same motion. That's that back line. Those are far away trees, and then we'll do some close up trees. Just don't make them the same height, make some taller. Okay, so it looks natural. All right, now I'm gonna show you a pine tree. I'm gonna, I didn't even clean my brush. I still have a little green on it, but it's still my big flat brush. I'm gonna dip it in black paint on both sides, chisel it off so I don't have any clumps. I'm not scooping ice cream. I'm just trying to coat my bristles, okay? And then I'm gonna show you how to make a happy tree, okay? So everybody watch, even if you're not ready, watch. I'm gonna tap, tap, tap on a trunk, okay? And notice I didn't pull it down and it's not straight. I don't want anything to be straight and perfect in this painting because then it won't look natural, okay? And then, so I've got black paint on my brush. I'm going to tap, leave a point at the top, leave a, you know, a sharp point at the top. I'm gonna tap on the branches going down, alternating the sides but I'm not holding my branch, my brush at an angle in either direction. I'm keeping that top flat. And then I'm moving my arm a little bit and tapping on each cluster of branches. I don't like painting little mustaches as I go down. And then it's gonna get wider at the base and they're gonna go all the way down, all the way down. The reason they go all the way down is if you see a pine tree at City Park, the bottom branches have been removed for someone to mow underneath. Same thing on your lawn, right? Or when you get a Christmas tree. So you make sure that you go all the way down. The other thing is, notice the tree is at an angle. I wanna keep that triangular shape. And I want to leave spaces between the trees. Don't make it a solid black cone, okay? You have to leave spaces so the birds can fly in and build a nest. So on this side and on this side, I'm gonna paint the tallest ones. And that kind of frames my painting. So if you missed all that, I'm gonna show you one more time, okay? I'll show you as many times as you need. All right, so I'm gonna tap on a trunk. I'm not gonna pull it straight down. I don't want it to be perfect. Deliberately not perfect, okay? Tap, tap, tap. I'm gonna always leave a point at the top. And then I'm gonna take that flat part of my brush, and I'm gonna tap on from the center out, from the center out, from the center out, from the center out, and click tapping on different sides, sides of a mustache in little clusters of branches. And as I go out, I'm tapping more because I'm making the tree wider, making the tree wider. And I'm gonna tap all the way down because the grass is gonna grow right up to the bottom of the tree. No little trunk or stem showing. But here's the thing, when I'm done, make sure I have a point at the top. Always, pine trees always need a point. And any areas that look skimpy in the center, tap over them more. And I'll tell you why, okay? The reason you tap over them more in the center is that trees have branches that grow up to this side, they have branches that grow up to the other side, they have branches that grow straight out in front of you and straight back. The only way you can paint those ones that are straight back is by tapping more fullness over the center area of the tree, like that. You wanna hide that trunk. Just like if you bought a artificial Christmas tree, you wouldn't want the trunk to show. Same thing, same thing. And at the risk of boring you to tears, I'm gonna describe it one more time, tap, tap, tap. These are gonna, this one's gonna be shorter because I want the taller ones on the outside to frame. 
brought down a little bit. Tap, 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 tap. Now, if your brush is too big for the tree, switch to a smaller flat brush. Alternating the sides, holding my brush still flat. Making it wider as it goes down. Not trying to be perfect. Perfection is, perfection is kind of the enemy of art here. And then all the way down, all the way down. And then if it's skimpy, I can tap up more just over the center. Just over the center, fill it in over the center. Got another little treat. This painting has three on this side, three on this side. I personally don't like to have symmetry in my paintings. I like to have odd numbers uh, because then it looks more natural. So we're doing all this in black. Make sure you have space between your branches for the birds to fly and build a nest, remember, okay? So I'm gonna either put three on this side or three on this side and two on the other, just so they don't have symmetry. I want it to look natural, right? So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another little one right here. This one's gonna have a kid. I could switch to a smaller brush or I could just use the corner of this one. Either way works. We we're talking about Bob Ross earlier. He does the exact same thing. And he does it with any number of brushes that he has. Sometimes he uses a fan, sometimes he uses a flat brush. Sometimes he uses a one inch big old brush that you use to paint your house. I'm gonna put another one over here. So I'm gonna have two on this side, three on that side, but you do however many you want. If you like this, go to town, put as many as you want. If you look at it and say, oh, that one needs a kid, go for it. Or a friend, every tree needs a friend. My husband is a scientist and he showed me this article that he saw, an article or TED talk, I can't remember, it was a while ago. Anyway, where it said that trees communicate via their roots. And if one tree is really lacking in a nutrient, it will actually deprive itself so that the tree next to it will get more nutrients. Isn't that wild? They communicate via their roots and through exchanging water and nutrients. I thought that was super cool. You can use a smaller brush. Do you like that? You can use a smaller brush and make tinier ones. In the very back, far, far, far away. We're putting them in black and then I'm gonna show you how to highlight them a little bit. The original painting doesn't have them highlighted, but what the heck, I wanna show you how, cause you're good. Cause you're special. And then uh, that'll be the end of our painting. We'll sign our name. Then you can have whatever time you want to visit because your Zoom can go as long as you want. So I was telling you a little bit before about our Bob Ross classes. We're, we're closed right now just because I don't feel like opening when it's not safe. Um, we'll be opening before too long. And then when we do, um, we always have, uh, at the studio in general, we have acrylic classes every single day. So every evening we sell beer, wine, and soda. Um, for now, we just have lots of different kinds of um, art kits that we're selling. We're, we have some pour painting kits. We have canvas kits, as you know. Um, we have some face mask painting kits. 
and all, all of those different kinds of kits are 20 bucks. Um, and so we do have retail hours where we sell those. While well, we're waiting for the pandemic to get a little bit better, but when, once we're reopened, we'll have classes every single day, every single evening um, of the week. Uh, we'll, only day we're normally closed when it's not pandemic is Thanksgiving. Um, we're, we're here all the time. Because there's always some artist that wants to be here and wants to have fun with people. We have, we're local and family owned. So all of our artists are local Denver artists. Let me show you, I'm, um, I want to, before anyone has to go, I want to show you the uh, highlights on the trees because we're almost done. So I'm going to use a smaller flat brush than I used before. And I put lighter green on it. And then on the sides of the tree facing the sunset, I'm going to tap on this lighter green on the branches. But here's the thing, don't cover up all your dark. Don't cover your dark. You need the dark to see the light, right? It's a good, uh, good philosophy for life as well as for painting. Don't cover all your dark. You can put a little bit on the other side of the tree, but you want to put it more where the light is because this is light shining up one side of the tree. So I'm going to shine up one side even more. And this is with that lighter green. Light lighter green, okay? And so I'm gonna put more of it on the left side of the tree on this side because that's the side facing the sunset. The sunset is kissing that, those tree branches. Give them a little smooch of light. So I'll have a little bit on the other side, but not quite as much. It's not getting quite as much light. And go all the way out to the tips of the branches when you put on those highlights. All the way out to the tips because the light would sit on the tips, right? And again, a little bit more on the other side or a little bit less on the other side. Still get some, just not as much. And then when I get to the left side, since the sun's over here, I'm gonna do the reverse. More over here. The sun is kissing this side more. The setting sun. So it's going to be brighter over there. A little bit on the other side. Don't cover your dark. Don't cover your dark. I say that in my sleep. You have to have dark to see the light. Imagine that's Bob Ross from heaven telling you, don't cover the dark. Oh, I was gonna tell you, we also do Bob Ross classes about twice a month here during normal times. Those are six hour long classes, oil painting classes. You leave with a gorgeous oil painting, gorgeous. They do cost a little bit more than the acrylics, um, but they're totally worth it. And those are certified. We use all Bob Ross class, um, products and brushes, and I'm certified to teach it from the Bob Ross company. Cool. Woohoo. Look at how pretty your painting is. So far, so good. All right, now here's the last step, second to last step. We're going to use a little teeny tiny brush. We're going to make, you can do pink if you want. Or you can do yellow flower tops. I'm not making a flower shape. I'm just using little colors, little um, blobs of pink or yellow. And I'm just making some wildflowers in my grasses. Add a little red to a little white, right? For pink. Or you can uh, add white to yellow. And um, definitely add white to the yellow if you're gonna make um, yellow ones. 
because the white helps it show up a bit. And so just little clusters of wildflowers. Do we know what kind of flowers these are? No. Do we care? No. Just, just cool little flowers. They're only on the left side in this painting. I don't know why, but put them wherever you want. And remember, if they're farther away, they're gonna be smaller than up front because we're standing closer in, in theory. And you can mix yellow and white to get orange. You want whatever, whatever you like. You can even, if you want to pretend this is Texas, you can make them blue and white, make them bluebells. Why not? You're painting. You can make them purple, do whatever you like. Any questions about the flowers or the highlights in the tree? Any questions about anything else you want me to make up answers to? When we're done, we're going to sign our names. I'm going to sign my name anyway the bottom right hand corner with a teeny tiny detail brush. And if you sign your name down there, just put your initials. Then when I see this in the Denver Art Museum, yours in the Denver Art Museum, I'll know exactly who you are. I'll be so excited. I wanna thank you so much for painting with me today and for supporting a local family owned, woman owned business and independent artists. We have about 500 different paintings here that were all locally created, local Denver artists. And so uh, we appreciate your business for that reason. You're supporting your community. Um, and thank you for that.